morning, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And certainly a wonderful honor to be found in worship this morning. Uh, this is a new month. It's the month of May, the first Sunday. And so we are glad and excited and happy to have this opportunity to lift up the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Uh, to all of you that are listening in this morning, uh, once again, we are coming to you from the sanctuary of Pilgrim Baptist Church uh, in Kenner, Louisiana, where I serve as senior pastor, and also to uh, the Pilgrim family and the Mount Zion family this morning. Uh, we give you Godspeed and just thank you for taking this opportunity uh, to be in worship with us. The Lord is worthy, and, uh, and since I know he's worthy, come on, let's worship the Lord together as uh, we shall be led in our praise and our worship uh, through uh, the wonderful sounds and voices of uh, Minister E. Dwight Franklin, Minister Travis Coleman, Brother Jermaine Stein. Amen and praise the Lord, everybody.
love him because he first loved us. Our scripture of the morning will be found in the book of Psalm, Psalm 24. Psalm 24, and it reads thusly, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in this holy place? He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Blessings and favor to all who will receive the word of the Lord on this day. Shall we bow in prayer? Holy, righteous, and everlasting God, once again, Dear Master, we stand before your presence in your sanctuary to give you thanks and to give you praise for all that you do for us, for who you are, for even working miracles in our lives. I thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to experience new mercies this morning. New mercies because you are a faithful God. We thank you, dear Master, for being good to us, oh God. Better to us than we can ever be to ourselves. And Lord, this morning I tell you, thank you. Yes. For the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, dear Master, you are worthy to be praised. We give you our best today, God. We stand today in your strength, knowing that without you, we certainly would fail. Oh God, but with you, we know, oh God, that you will bring about the, the possible. And so, dear Lord, right now, as we have come to enter into worship, there are many who are listening, there are many who are viewing. We ask you, oh God, special blessings and favor upon their households and their families, oh God, that you will allow their families and their homes to be homes of peace, love, joy, and understanding. I know that you can and I know that you will because, oh God, you allowed us to wake up this morning to behold this brand new day. God, I'm asking that you would continue to bless churches all over this world and nation. Oh God, as we stand in this new normal, God, to lift up the name, to preach, oh God, in our sanctuaries or in our homes, oh God, to let this dying world know that there is a saving reality in knowing Jesus Christ for themselves. And so, Lord, now, in this hour, I'm asking that you would have your way, that your way and your will it certainly will be done. God, there are many among us that are listening who may be burdened this morning. There are many that are listening, oh God, that may be bereaved this morning. I'm 
I'm asking, oh God, that you would lift up, bow down heads. I'm asking this morning, oh God, that you would restore joy and peace. I know that you can, oh God, because you loved us enough that you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to hung, bled, and died on an old worthy cross that we would be saved. And so, Lord, bless now this moment, this time that you have blessed us with. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. And thank you, God.
when some staff in, uh, in the ministry of music, and then I shall come and share with you the word of God.
friend and family. Thank you so much for sharing those wonderful words of song with us this morning. Well, it is preaching time. We're going to go to the book of Psalm once again and share with you the 18th Psalm. At the 18th Psalm, we'll read three verses there, verses one, two, and three. The 18th Psalm, verses one through three. From King James, we find it written this way. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. And on the strength of those three verses this morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to tag a topic to those verses, and I just want to talk about the God we worship. The God we worship. This song, this morning, as uh, many of them that we share, uh, almost the entire book of Psalm, uh, they are written to give glory and honor to the Most High God. It's very interesting uh, when we read throughout the Psalm, we will find uh, a proof that the Lord, our God, is certainly worthy of our thanks. Uh, these songs that we read, of course, historically, the song, uh, they uh, are songs, are, uh, and the songs and within the song were used for temple worship experience. It was the object of what we would consider to be the hymn book of the temple. And I love reading the song uh, here, even in the 18th Psalm, because these are times um, that we have to be reminded over and over again. I know I certainly do that even in the midst of whatever happens or whatever is going on around us, it is the truth that the Lord is worthy to be praised. You know, from Psalm 1 all the way to the end where it concludes at Psalm 150, we find a sequence of shouts and times of celebration and adoration to God because when we even think about its origin, its beginning, Psalm 1 actually spells out for us today that we can be blessed. You know, it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But I like where it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in its law he'll meditate both day and night. And then it says, and ye shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. Praise, adoration, celebration. Because I need to be reminded even today as I remind you that the Lord is worthy. But then when I begin to really look at the psalm, I find uh, that even uh, David declares in Psalm 34, David says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And then I find that he also declares when you're down and out, he says, I will look to the hills from the coming 
my help because my help comes from the Lord. But I love the conclusion of this entire book of Psalms because it's, it concludes by actually reminding us of the power of praise. Yeah? Because one, uh, Psalm 146 begins the same way it ends by saying praise you the Lord. And it ends with praise you the Lord. But then the concluding Psalm, the great hymn book, uh, 150, it says praise ye the Lord. And then it brings the wonderful instruments and, and with the organ, with uh, the cymbals and the lute and everything that you can put together. Put all the instruments together. Add the voices to it because it ends by saying to let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Because we do serve a God who is worthy of our worship. Yes, he is. And so particularly today, uh, we still find that the Lord is worthy of our worship. Because this song, Psalm 18, is one uh, that is written to give honor and to magnify God for delivering David from King Saul, but also in delivering David from all of his enemies. I like this song because it is one uh, that reminds us today that the Lord, the Lord will deliver us. The Lord will, will, will allow us to conquer our fears. The Lord will allow us to conquer our, our enemy. Matter of fact, David in this particular song, he, he, he says that the Lord allowed him to have absolute victory. He allowed him to express gratitude for who he was and what he had done. Okay. And so what I tend to find out in this particular song, and especially as we focus on our lives today, is still the same. You may not see it today, you may not see it in this very hour, but God is worthy. You, you, you may not Say, I, I don't know what's going on around me. I, I don't see the ending point, but I want to help you this morning to, to realize something about God, and that is to know that God inhabits our praise. Yes, you know, yes. and, and if that will be the case today, then, then, then I will know in the midst of whatever is going on, whatever it looks like, and I know it's a little unsettling. It, 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 it's a little, you know, when, when, when we want something to stop it, and we're waiting for, for this pandemic to end. I know that it is, it is, it is in, our, it's in our thoughts and in our minds. But let me let you know something today. The answer is already there. Because the answer lies in the hands of God himself. This song is a song of victory. It is a song of Deliverance it is a psalm that expresses gratitude to God. Okay. And if that is the case, I want you to know that we too have a reason to glorify God. Because when I really think about the goodness of Jesus, I will declare that he's worthy to be praised. Yeah, okay. I, I gotta spend a few moments. To recognize that the Lord is worthy because of a reality. And the reality tells me I might be down. I might be in the middle of my battle. I may be in the midst of my storm. I may feel conquered, defeated, crushed, bruised, overpowered, overwhelmed, outdone, subjugated, humiliated. But God is still worthy. So here he is, David, the great psalmist, the great lyrics. David says here in the 18th Psalm, verses 1 through 3, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Then he says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemy. Because on this first Sunday, 
month of May 2020, I want to remind you, brothers and sisters, that God is worthy of our worship. You know, worship uh, is a word sometimes you just throw around and play with. But let me tell you something about worship. Uh, worship comes from uh, an old English word that means worship. And so when I think about the goodness and the mercy and the love of God himself, he is worth what we give to him because worship is our way. As it says to ascribe worth to God because it is God who takes care of us. It is God who loves us in spite of. It is God who is the one we can lean and depend on because he is the great I am. Matter of fact, he's more than I can ever think he will be and ever shall be because he's God. And I might not be able to explain God, but God can explain me because he looks beyond my faults and he sees every one of my needs. I thank God for God. I thank God for who he is today. But why must we worship God? These three verses tell us First thing that I must understand about the worship of God or the worship of God is that I must understand that God is worthy of our acknowledgement. Come on, David. David said in the first verse, he acknowledges something that we need to acknowledge when we think about God. And he says, I will love thee, O God. Then he says, my strength. At the very beginning, David, remember, he was, had been on the run from Saul. He was, he was uh, afraid that he would lose his life. Yeah, now I see something here. He was afraid that, that, that he, would be, he would be taken over by his enemies. But when he really looked at his life and when he really explored where he really was, he realized it was nothing but the Lord. And when he realized it was nothing but the Lord, he gave acknowledgement to God by saying, but I love you, Lord, because you are my strength. And we too must acknowledge, we too must declare our love for God because when we declare our love and acknowledge our love for God, it is at that moment that we will declare and acknowledge our dependency of God. And when we acknowledge our dependency of God, what happens is that we are able to see God for who he is. I say thank you, David. Thank you, David, for reminding me of the love of God that God has for me. Franklin said earlier, he says, oh, how I love Jesus. He said, because he first loved me. But then when I think about the love that David expresses from God in verse number one, I will love thee, O God, my strength. It was a covenant of love. It was and is this tender intimacy that David says, I want to be closer to God. I, I, I want to, uh, you know, this, when, you, when you look at the meaning of love in this particular psalm, it means you want to snuggle up next to him. You want to get close to God. And, and see, as we live, trouble's going to rise. And as we live, we, we're going to have some, 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 some trials and some tribulations, but we got this Nuzzle up to God, get closer to Him, slide up close to the Lord and know that He will protect us. See, He's our strength, He is our shield, he, He's everything that we need, but we must express our love for the Lord. It's like uh, the love that Mary Magdalene expressed when, when, she, when she saw Jesus after the resurrection. She was excited. She, 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 was, she was beside herself because she realized that Jesus was who he said he was. And it looked like the disciples when he showed up at 
after the resurrection, he, he showed up at the house and, 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 and when he, he, he just showed up through the door, he did not on the door, he came through the door and stood before the disciple of that. Can I just stop right there? I love the fact that, that he's a miracle worker. I love the fact that I can depend on him because he's more than I will ever think or ever imagine because he is the great I am. Is it the great I am? David says, I know. And he says, I love him because he's my strength. And so I thought about that acknowledgement in verse number one where he says, I love him and then he calls him my strength. And when I really thought about that particular aspect of this relationship, the intimacy that David felt for the Lord because he knew it wasn't him himself that delivered him from Saul. It wasn't himself that delivered him from the enemies. It was God. He realized it was God and it was God alone that worked it out for him. He's my strength. I can lean on him. I, I can depend on him because when I really think about the reality of God and, and, and what worship should do for us, my brothers and sisters, certainly we must realize that we must acknowledge who God really is. Amen. And we acknowledge him for who he is and what he continues to do. You know, I, I like to always think about how he wakes us up in the morning. You know how no, no matter how many times we mess up and, and slip up and, and and fall, he's the one that picks us up. Matter of fact, he's a forgiving God. Yes. Matter of fact, and since he's a forgiving God, we need to express and acknowledge that he is who he says he is. And I'm glad to know that as he's my strength, I know that he's my strength, which tells me that. I can express what may seem like nothing and you still won't answer. Yeah. Because what my strength, him being my strength, is that he's bigger than I am because what greater is he that is in me than he that he is in the world. Nothing is beyond the hand of God. So not only, not only must I recognize that God is worthy of our acknowledgement. But then when I look at verse number two, I realize the second thing, and that is God is worthy of our dependency. David says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high power. I said, come on, David. David said, he's all of that and more. That's how he says it. He puts it in, 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 in terms where he spells out what God is to him. And so as he expresses who God is to him, He's letting us know today that he himself has a personal relationship with God. My rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, my buckler, my high tower. He says, he's that to me. Listen, if he's all of that to David, I want you to know, wherever you are this morning, that he'll be all of that for you too. Yes, yes. He's a powerful God. Yes. David says, he's so powerful, I can depend on him. Why is it? Because David says, he's my stability. Because yes. he's my, my rock. And I heard the old church talk about he's a rock in a weary land. He's a shelter in the time of the storm. You know, he, 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 I, I can 
can stand on him. I can, I can lean on him because he is my rock. He's my stability. He, he takes me through trials and, and turmoil and, and tribulation. He stands beneath me in order that I can stand tall. Yeah. He's my rock. He's my stability. But not only is he my stability, but he's also my safety. Your safety, yes. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. Yes. He, 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 he's a hedge of protection all around us. You know, there's some good stuff. You know, I can depend on him. Because I heard somebody say he, he, he'll rescue me. He'll deliver me from danger. He, he, he is, he's my, he's my safety. He, he's my, my, my place of great strength. And he is the one who takes care of me when I can't take care of myself. Yes. He's my stability. He's my safety. But he says he's also my savior. John 3.16 spells it out for us. My brothers and sisters, it says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I, look, I, I, I want you to understand that John 14 tells me that there's only one way. Yes. Matter of fact, in John 14 uh, chapter, it says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But, I, but, but he said, but where I go, you can come also. But guess what? You got to go through one way. Because yes. Jesus says, uh, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto the father but by me. Okay, something is coming out clear now. If he is the one I can be on. David says he's my rock, okay? He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. David says then he's my God. He's in control. As a matter of fact, when David calls him his God, he said, well, he's talking to the Lord. Why is he calling him his God? Stop, y'all. Because there's a lot of stuff that we put before us that becomes our God. Sometimes we put our homes as our God, our, our cars as our, as, as our God, our, 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 our families as our God, our, you know, our, our jobs as our, our money as our God. But what David is saying, he said, I gotta repeat this again. I need everybody to understand that, that he is who he says he is because he's my God. And so what he's actually saying, I believe in the sovereignty of a, of a greater, someone who is greater than I am. That God is the one who worked it out, can work it out because he knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. Because he's sovereign, he is in control. And since he's in control, I can always depend on him, my God. But he said, my God and my strength. He's a move. He's steady. He's stable. He's one that can supply every one of our needs. Yes. Matter of fact, it is Paul who says that we can know, and this is for all of us listening in, that all things will work together for them who love God. Oh, I see the correlation now. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Yes. I don't know about you, but my soul must be anchored in the Lord. Yes. Come with me from day to day, my soul must be anchored in the Lord. That's why David says, he's my deliverer, he's my fortress, he's my rock, he's my God, he is my strength. I'm going to trust him. But then he said, I'm going to trust him because David used the word, he said, buckler. 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 I said, what is buckler? Well, buckler means that he's a shield. 
A shield is used to ward off, to block. So you got to understand spiritual warfare. Yes. When we understand spiritual warfare, it is the Apostle Paul again who reminds the church at Ephesus about a shield. Matter of fact, he tells uh, tells this church. Ephesians chapter number 6 he says put on the whole arm of God that you're able to stand against the tricks of Satan he wants to destroy us but guess what David says he's our shield the butler he's, our, he, he, he's the one when, 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 when trouble comes into your life when, when things happen to you that are beyond your control. God is your shield. Yes, yes. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You know, I thought about the benediction that I like to, to read and hear all the time where it says now unto him that is able to do seemingly abundantly above all that we will ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. He's in our lives. He is the one that we can depend on. And he's worthy of our dependency. There's some two more things verse, verse 2 brings out. He says, he's the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I said, okay. So he's, he's my stability He's my safety. He's my savior. He is the sovereign God. He is my shield. The horn of my salvation. He's my security. The horn of my salvation. The horn, especially in the time of battle, is a symbol of strength and conquest. When David calls God the horn of his salvation. He is saying that the Lord is his strength unto salvation and because of the strength that God gives, it is a, the strength to conquer anything. Not on our own accord, but by the power of God. And the horn of salvation represents plenty. He's more than we can ever ask or think. He is a symbol because that horn, if you've ever seen the picture of the, 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 the horn uh, of salvation, uh, normally you'll see the horn of salvation uh, filled with fruit and, and, and bread because what it actually tells us today when we Acknowledge God when when we worship God, He will be our plenty. Matter of fact, He will allow our lives to have a life that overflows with abundance. The horn of my salvation, the horn of my salvation, and then He's my high top. Matter of fact, here. I heard Isaiah said that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But I thought about he'll lift us high tower. He'll lift us above our situations. He'll lift us up, up above. Matter of fact, I, I, I read somewhere where it tells us that when we worship God, he will make our enemies. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God, which means the Lord lifts up, us up above our circumstances, our, our situations, things we don't understand, a pandemic that is seen to be destroying lives and, and, and sickness and death, but guess what? He's still able. And I know that he's able because he's my rock, he's my fortress, he's my deliverer, he's my God, he's my strength. I can trust him. He's my, he's my buckler, he's the horn of salvation and my high tower. 
like you still look up to him. The Lord is able to give me what I need because he holds all powers in the palm of his hand. So he's worthy of our acknowledgement. He's worthy of our dependency. We got to give lean on him, but, but I like verse 3. Maybe this will help somebody in your living room today. David says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemy. Here we go, church. What we must understand it when we think about God, we must thoroughly understand that God is worthy of our devotion. Spend time with Him. Lay before God. Matter of fact, I'm still reminded each and every day that prayer changes things. I'm still reminded today that we need not be weary and anxious about nothing, but through supplication and through prayer, with thanksgiving, we have to make our request known unto God. Call on not the name of the Lord, and the Lord will answer your prayer. David spoke in the 48th Psalm where David says, I called upon the Lord. I went to the Lord and I called on his name. And he says, and the Lord came to my rescue. David said, I was in a pit in my retreat. But he said that the Lord took him up out of the pit, set his feet on a solid foundation, established his goings, put a new song in his mouth, even praises unto God. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. We got to spend time with God. We got to call upon his name. Because if we call upon the name of the Lord, the Lord, he will answer our prayer. Praise God because he is worthy. Praise God because he is all that we need. Praise God and acknowledge his goodness to you and to me. Praise God for the Lord he will take care of me. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. God is worthy to be praised. Can I preach for just one more moment and tell you today that God, He is worthy of our worship. Come on and help me lift Him up. Come on and help me lift up the name of a mighty good God. I love Him and I love Him and I love Him for myself. And I love Him because the Lord is my strength. I love Him because He is the rock of my salvation. I love Him because He is my deliverer. I love Him because He's my strength. I have to sometimes I may feel like giving up, throwing in the towel. But I realize that I must turn to God and God will lift up my bow down head. And he's alright. I know he's alright because he loved us enough church that he gave his only son Jesus. 
cross uh, that died uh, on that old rugged cross. Uh, you may be asking, uh, what can wash uh, away my sins? Uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Uh, what can make me uh, whole again? Uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Uh, he will uh, take care of you. Uh, how do you know it? Uh, because when he died uh, on that old rugged cross, uh, they buried him in uh, the borrowed tomb. Uh, but it said uh, that it was in three days uh, that he wrestled uh, with hell at the grave. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, and when he wrestled uh, with hell uh, at the grave, uh, it says in three days, uh, one, two, three, uh, one for the Father, one for His Son, one for the Holy Ghost, and He rose again with all power in His hand. I praise Him, I honor Him, thank You, Lord, for dying for me. Thank You, Lord, for keep on protecting me. Thank You, Lord, for being my buckler, for being my strength. For being my protection, for being my shield, he is alright. God, he is worthy of my worship. And I give him thanks and I give him praise. Because I do know that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. There's power in praise. Yes, he inhabits our praise. So wherever you are, just tell the Lord thank you. He's worthy. And I know that he's worthy. Because even through all of this, he is the same God. He has never changed. The same God in 1919 that brought this world through a pandemic worse than the pandemic that we are experiencing today. He brought, he brought them through. And guess what? I'm going to worship him. I'm going to thank him. Because one day, in his time, he's going to bring us through. I love the Lord because he is my strength. So he is today, my brothers and sisters, the God in whom we worship. But always remember something that reminds me of this time that we are in. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 If my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and here we go and heal their land you are a believer. You're saved today. You should be blessing God right now, giving Him thanks and giving Him praise if you're saved today because you know it. You would declare that even through all of this, I love the Lord anyhow because He allows me to lean on Him. I can depend on Him. But I can certainly acknowledge Him. And as I acknowledge Him, I give my all and all to him. I praise and thank him in spirit and in truth. But of course, if there is someone that they have tuned in today and you're not saved, this is your moment right now. You can believe on Jesus Christ. The word of God declares that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Believe in your heart that Christ Jesus was raised from the dead. You 
shall be saved. And you'll be saved at the very moment. But you must acknowledge that you are a sinner. And when you acknowledge that you are a sinner, you say, I'm a sinner. But I stand in need of Jesus Christ. And when you confess him, you shall be saved. I'm learning more than that, that life is short. And it's not just a saying, it's a truth. We can be here today and gone tomorrow. Because God is in control. We know not the day nor the hour when the Lord is going to call our name. But the ultimate for us today is that we must be ready. So, if you've never accepted Christ, let this time be your time to accept Christ as your Savior and your Lord. And when you do the when you do that, you shall be saved. I promise that the Lord will hear your prayer. You fervently go to him. And honestly, ask him for forgiveness. He'll forgive you of your sins. And he'll give you a new life, a life more abundant. I bless you my brothers and my sisters. God, we do thank you for your preach word. Thank you for the strength to stand on another Sunday morning. I'm asking a special blessing for all who are listening today. That even through this, God must be worshipped. God must be praised. Allow them, O oh God, not to be afraid or ashamed, but that they will come to you honestly, fervently, to give their life and their commitment to you. Thank you, God, for this experience today. Be with preachers and pastors who are leading through a pandemic. Blessings on pastors and preachers who stand in empty sanctuaries to preach your word. Give them the strength to do it until you allow a return. I thank you and I bless and honor your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Now, we're going to take a moment we're going to share in the ordinance of um, the Lord's Supper. And so for those of you who will partake of the Lord's Supper, we ask that you will prepare your elements at this time as we remember the broken body of Jesus Christ. As we remember the blood Share that Calvary to remember that even now the blood still works. It is the blood that gives us strength from day to day. Lord, once again, I'm asking that you would bless these elements, that as we will take and receive of them. Let us remember Calvary, the place of the skull, the place where your son sacrificed his life that we would have eternal life. It's a, it's, it's a symbol that helps us to remember what Christ did for us, that we will reflect on Calvary as we remember our own salvation. The old things have passed away, but behold, all things become new. I thank you and I honor you in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. On a hill far away Thank you. 
David and his disciples, and they ate together. So we all read. After supper ended, again he gave thanks. This is the blood of the New Testament. Do this in memory of me. May he drink. So we all drink together. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We bow. Enjoy the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Amen.